what I made though, and I can't speak from all my sisters, but I made the conscious choice that I wasn't going to put that much value in money because look at what happens, right? And look how people live their lives. And luckily I found spirituality at a young age. So I was able to really go, you know, adjust my feelings or really decide what kind of feelings or relationship I wanted to have with money. Um, but for many, I don't think that they ever actually go and look at the, their history, their roots and say, okay, well, this is what I grew up seeing. This is what scares me. This is what I have anxiety about. Um, you know, because some people can have a lot of money and they never spend it because they, they don't, they're afraid that they'll run out or many people have not a lot of money and they overspend. Right. So we do a lot of different and some things. People, and I would add to that. And there are people who have not, a, not so much money, but enjoy it. And people have a lot of money and don't enjoy it, which exactly. I think, I think again, as we will hopefully expand further, I think that's probably the most important question around money. Not so much, how do you have more? How do you have less? How much do you have? How much is enough? How can I live a, li a life where I enjoy what, what I have, be it great or, or, or not as much? And also, we know that a lot of people, um, especially kids, that come from a lot of money, sometimes they feel shame about it because they feel undeserving. Like, why do I have all this when my friends may not? And we also know that um, there are children who are also ashamed to have their friends to their house because they're embarrassed for not having. So it creates a lot of different feelings around guilt, shame, worthiness. Um, and I do want to talk about the Kabbalistic understanding of money because I think that money can be uh, used, obviously, for positive or negative. Um, it can bring out positive and negative behaviors in all of us. And there's also this understanding, I think, for some, that if you are truly, in fact, it was something that I read. So someone once asked a wise rabbi, why should you of all people have such a splendid courtyard? Why are you so truly royal, enjoying great plenty and a life of luxury? Shouldn't a rabbi and a righteous person serve as an example to others to be satisfied with little and to have a life of real hardship? And the rabbi answered him among many others, but I want to focus on this part and I thought we could talk about it. But Moses was one of the greatest teachers and he grew up in a palace, right? Um, Abraham was also very wealthy. There's many patriarchs, matriarchs. So what is this idea? Because I think people often, and I, I think that's part of the reason that people choose for themselves. Like if I'm a spiritual being, I can't be a wealthy being. If I'm a wealthy being, I can't pursue spirituality. If I'm a this, I'm a that. And it, it's never black or white in anything. But this idea of money, there is a spiritual energy in money. Of course. So I think certainly the Kabbalistic view, I, I would um, argue the, the, the spiritual view is different than I think some people misunderstand, right? There is this view that if you're spiritual, you are divorced of the physical world. And therefore, in, in the story that you, that you mentioned, people assume that certainly spiritually elevated people, but certainly people who are desiring a spiritual life, divorce themselves or to some degree um, lessen the enjoyment that they receive from money or even from this physical world. Right, well, then that would translate to also food, right? Everything. Uh, sex, um, anything. In the and there are, and again, there are, I know, certain spiritual traditions that that, that is their teaching that is not certainly the Kabbalistic teaching and, or, or the Kabbalistic way. The understanding is that there is energy in everything. 